Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofinetta Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today, we're going to be talking about just one such deck because uh, we're going to go back into Skellig. It's been a while since I think the last Skellig deck we did was the Reckless Flurry deck. Uh, and that was a pure meta deck. But today we're going to try and counter the meta just a little bit. There's a lot of control in the meta these days uh, with uh, Siege, uh, Northern Realms and stuff like Skellige being very, very hefty um, adversaries, especially with, with Syndicate as well, also very control heavy. So what I try to do with today's deck is to defend against that a little bit better. So today we're going to be diving deep into the Beefy Witcher's deck. So Beefy Witchers are completely teamed around the self-wound archetype, the armor archetype of Skellige, uh, in combination with a lot of the uh, Skellige-specific Witcher cards. And that's what we're going to uh, go through these cards one by one, as usual, because uh, you can see them over here already at a quick glance. Not too many of the new cards included here, but just a very good counter against a lot of the control meta these days. Now, if you're familiar with these cards, as usual, you can skip to the example matches. The deck is also in the description down below of this video in the uh, Play Gwent link there, so you can uh, copy this deck to try it out for yourself. And... Um, for everybody else, everybody who is still here and not has just sped its way, his way or her way to the example matches, we're gonna go through these cards one by one in extreme detail. And as usual, we're starting at the bottom with the Bear Witcher Adapts. There's two of these in the deck and that has a specific purpose. We'll be talking about that in a minute as well. But the Bear Witcher Adapt starts at seven power with four provisions, but on deployed damages itself by four. So he starts at three power, but at the end of every one of your turn, he will heal himself by one, so eventually getting back up to that seven power. And if he's not damaged, he will gain one army instead at the end of every turn. So very, very powerful card that allows you just to, to defend yourself against damage. So there's not that many cards that can disable, well, clear this card in one go. So that gives you a beefy card to defend your other units with especially against random damage, and that's what this deck is really focusing on. Next up, we have the Megascope in this deck as well. So deploy, pick up bronze, allied units, and after two turns you spawn its base copy on the right of Megascope. Since this card spawns the cards, you can use it on the Bear Witcher Adept, and he will spawn the seven power, the full seven power Bear Witcher Adept right next to it, and it will also gain an extra armor point. Although, no, that probably won't trigger, because the Megascope triggers first, um, well, triggers after the end of turn abilities. But still, this uh, creates a 7 power body on the board, without anything that your opponent can really do against, unless they want to waste Korot the Heatwave on this card, but they most likely will not. So, just able to generate a few more of those Bear Witcher adapts. Then we have a Raid card, Armor Up, where we damage an enemy unit by 2, and you spawn 3 Witcher students on your side of the board, on the opposing row. Then damage them all by one, so giving you three damaged units and armoring them up by one instead. So only giving you five points with two points of damage, but those three damaged units can come in really handy in combination with certain other cards. Now we have Gutting Slash, of course, the uh, simple Gutting Slash card, damaging a unit by four, and if you have Blood there's two, so there's two damaged enemies on the opposing side, you damage a unit by six instead. So uh, easy four provision card that just allows you to remove an engine card. Then we have one Heimei Herbalist in this deck as well, since we're trying to damage ourselves a little bit as well. Um, some small amount of healing is definitely very useful in certain situations. So starts at two power and she um, gives you some healing if you put her on the range row. So you heal an allied unit by three and then on top of that boost that same unit by three as well. So the healing is of course limited by the maximum health, uh, maximum power of the unit. So heals up to three. Uh, points, but uh, other than that you get the extra three points. So possibly eight points for five uh, in a defensive manner. Now we have two Svalblood Priests in this deck as well. Starts at three power and at the end of every one of your turn you damage the unit to the right of the Svalblood Priest and boost himself by two. So very easy card to give you a lot of points on the Priest himself and of course benefit from the damage that you're doing to the unit on the right because there's a few of the cards that are in this deck that definitely benefit from getting damaged. Now we have Two bear with your quarter masters, which gives you a um, an easy way to damage yourself as well. So four power, one armor 
gives you zeal on the order ability that you can use immediately, which is two charges of damage in the allied unit by one, and then spawn a witcher student on this row. If you manage to put that damage onto units that don't really care about the damage, then you basically have another eight points for five provisions. Also a very good target for the mega scope if you don't really have a bear witcher adapt to target it with. And then basically the reverse of the herbalist from before, so this is a bear witcher, starts at eight power, but he damages himself by three on deploy. And at adrenaline four, he also damages an enemy unit of your choosing by three. So giving you eight points, but more in an offensive way than what the, uh, the Heimei Herbalist does. Then we have the Heim. The Heim is a very cool card and it's uh, starting to see more and more play again because of some of the older buffs. But the Heim starts at one power, but his deployability, its deployability I should say, is very very cool because on deploy you swap this unit's power with a damaged unit's power. This has two uses. Either you damage a unit from your opponent and then swap the unit, uh, the, the power with an enemy unit, or you damage one of your own units, and there's a few good targets for that, and swap it with a Heim that way, so it's extremely damaged at the very end. Um, but then those cards that you want to be using the, the, that on, uh, there's two of these in the deck, um, will have an ability to counteract the damage. So very, very powerful combo, but of course relies on that combo, so could technically brick so in a shorter round so be careful about using or keeping this in hand if you are at the end at a shorter round then of course we're damaging ourselves so uh, blue boy lugals can't be omitted in a deck like that six power for seven provisions and whenever this unit takes damage be it one damage or five damage you damage a random enemy unit by two he does not trigger when you take damage that kills him however so the killing takes precedent over the uh, passive effect but any other damage will trigger this card then we have Gert, another Witcher, of course, the beefy, beefy Witcher. I think this is the beefiest Witcher of all, because he starts at 8 power. And when you place him on the board, he spawns a Deafening Siren on the opposing row and damages all units on that row by 1. Um, if you are at Adrenaline 3, so at the very end of the round, he will only spawn that Siren and only damage that Siren. So basically only giving you 7 points. But of course, with the original ability, you have a lot of uh, row damage that you could potentially dish out. Then of course, for even more Witchers, we're using the location card for Skellige, Heron Kadoof giving you resilience of course so this card stays on the board for one uh, round and on deploy you spawn and play either one of the bear witches that we just talked about the only one that we haven't checked out just yet is the mentor who on deploy boosts himself by one for every damaged allied unit which could be very handy uh, if you're used uh, two armor ups but on adrenaline tree he also takes the uh, enemy units into account so this could potentially be a lot but usually you will be going for any of the older uh, bear witches with Herrn Kadoog. Uh, on order if you've uh, left this card on the board for one turn you can heal the adjacent units to this location by two giving you four more points. So a lot of points on this eight provision card. Then we have Sigdrifa's right has been buffed as well so went from nine provisions to eight and you summon a Skellige unit from your graveyard into an allied row. This will be very very useful because this will give you at least 10 points possibly even 12 points or even more depending on the card you can uh, select but there's a few targets for this that can be uh, very beneficial for your calls then one of those two cards that i was talking about Viltkarl, starts at five power but at berserk two so if he's at two health or lower two power or lower he transforms into the massive massive 12 power champion of Svalblood. That beast also has an order ability in which you can destroy an allied unit and then heal himself. Um, this is very powerful in combination with Heim. So if you damage the champion of Svalblood by one, for example, you can do that with your leader ability as well. We'll talk about that in a minute. You put him to 11 power, but he's damaged. You can use Heim to swap power. So the Heim becomes 11 power then the champion of Svalblood becomes one power and then you can use the order ability of the champion of Svalblood to dam uh, kill for example a uh, witcher student that you still have on the board so a two power or one power witcher student and then get back up to 12 power. This champion of Svalblood also remains that beast even if he goes to the graveyard so you can use Sigdriva's right to resurrect him again also giving you another shot at that massive order ability. 
Yeah, we have the Covalent of Steel, we have some beefy units, so we definitely need to try and protect those against some uh, heavy hitters. So the Covalent of Steel, 7 power, 2 armor, is a defender, uh, and on Berserk 6 he will gain an 1 point of armor at the end of every turn. Which is, of course, perfect for our team of being very armored up, very beefy indeed. Now we have Geralt Quen. Geralt Quen can be used on the Bear Witches that we just talked about, but there's one more card in this deck that this card should be actually used upon. But Geralt Quen starts at 2 power, has a shield, and on deploy you play a Witcher card from your deck. So you can choose any Witcher card that is still in your deck. If you have Adrenaline Tree at that point, you also give the card that you would, so the Witcher that you're playing, another shield, which is very, very powerful with, I think, the next card. There we go. That's Arnagad. So uh, another very beefy Witcher. 7 power, 2 armor, and on deploy he gains 1 armor for every damaged unit on the board. So including yours and your opponents could be very, very uh, high amount of uh, armor there. And if you are at Adrenaline 4, then whenever your opponent plays a unit on their side of the battlefield, you damage that unit by Arnagat's power and Arnagat by that unit's power. So for example, if your opponent tries to play a Ballista at that point, they will just get nuked by Arnagat, because Arnagat can definitely take some punishment there. The shield, uh, if you manage to play against something that doesn't... Um, well, can't really do a lot of uh, one power damage, then that shield will remain on Arnagat and you will get the first... Uh, unit that your opponent plays will die without you actually you losing any armor or any power on Arnagat. So the shield will take that first hit. So that's why Geralt Quen is best played with Arnagat, even though you lose one more turn with Arnagat, because of course Arnagat triggers at Adrenaline 4 and Geralt Quen, the, sh the extra shield, only triggers at Adrenaline 3. So... It depends on the situation, but usually you want to actually apply that shield, especially against something like monsters, because monsters uh, play high, very high-powered units. But with the shield on Arnagat, that high-powered unit will just take a massive seven-point hit whenever they are being played. And then we have the final card that is a very good target for both Haim and Sigdrifa's right is Olaf. Olaf starts at 10 power for 10 provisions, so already giving you the provision cost back. But on order, he will boost himself by twice the amount he is damaged. So imagine that you use Haim on this card. You damage Olaf once, he goes to 9. Haim is played on Olaf. Haim takes the 9 points and Olaf goes to 1. And then you trigger Olaf, you actually put Olaf to 18 points because the 9 damage will be duplicated. So you go back to 10 and then the 9 on top of that, so I miscounted uh, there, it's going to actually be, um, yeah, because he's damaged by 9, he goes to 10 and then to 19. There we go. So that's what's going to happen and hopefully you'll see that in action in a minute. Then of course we need some tall removal, so we put a Karate Heatwave into this deck as well, just allows you to banish a unit or an artifact, um, taking care of scenario cards or very high powered units in one fell swoop. And then the final card is what we actually use those Bear Witcher Adepts for. So Portal, uh, on deploy you summon a random 4 provision card from, well, or provision unit from your deck to the left of this card and after three turns you pull another one from the deck and put it on the right. Since we only have two four provision units in our deck this card will always pull the bear witcher adapt. Since they are summoned they also don't damage themselves so this is a 14 point card basically because of the bear witcher adapt. The only thing that you of course need to be careful about is that if you have portal in hand leave those bear witcher adapts in your deck. Mulligan them away and be sure that you don't pull those because uh, otherwise this card will only be 7 points. Then of course tactical advantage just as our stratagem we don't really need to veil all that much we can better use those 5 extra boosts on something like Blue Boy Lugos getting us more damage out of his ability. And then the leader ability of course is Ursine Ritual allowing you to damage an allied unit by 1 and you can do that up to 5 times and once all those charges are gone you spawn a bear abomination. Kind of got a buff uh, in one of the uh, previous patches with the fact that the Bear Witcher Abomination is now six points as well. And that's it for the deck overview, so uh, let's go into an example match to show you hopefully how well this deck does against certain meta decks at the moment. Okay, now first round against Jackpot. Okay, that's gonna be a tough one, because Jackpot don't u doesn't usually have like a lot of control that is on the lower end of the spectrum. But we get a good hand to start with. We get Portal and both Bear Witcher Adepts in our hand, so we're definitely going to be able to uh, use Portal effectively there. The two Quartermasters are good as well. Um, Heron Kaduch would be nice. But other than that, I think maybe we can get rid of the Heimei Herbalist. 
because she's not going to be that useful. And then the, we get the priest in return. Okay, so we can start with Ortal to get our double Bear Witcher adapts on the board. Now, opponent starts with a Mutant Maker. The new Jackpot ability is really, really overpowered, so they're just going to speed it up to um, a full coin pouch as quickly as possible. So let's put the Priest right next to the Adept to get our first uh, point loop going. So that's basically two points every turn since the Priest will always hit the armor. And now we got the Casino Bouncer, so they're just going for some tinning. Um, I can just use the uh, armor up ability here. Although I could use that later on, but there's not really a good alternative for it. So let's just hit the Mutants Maker with two power, uh, well, the two damage, and then end that turn there. And we get our second Bear Witcher Adept. As a, and as you can see, just the point totals from that alone is uh, huge. It does provide you with a very big Igni target, but that's not going to happen at the moment, I think. We are not at Horde just yet, so... Those passive flora peaches are not going to be useful. Um, do I just hit it with that? I think our opponent might actually pass this first round. So I'm going to keep my gutting slash and just use the quartermaster and hit two of those uh, witcher students and then boost one of them. Because I don't really have a good uh, target for the boost anyway. So 37, 14 might actually be pretty good. Yeah, there we go. Okay. That's good. That's good. Okay, so against Jackpot, I think I'm gonna actually push. Because they have no carry over. My hand is not the best, to be honest. Um, I can get rid of the Megascope and get another Priest, but the Priest doesn't really have a good target at the moment. Uh, might as well get rid of Arnegat since I can pull him with Geralt Quen. Um, and I need to go first, so I think I'm just gonna use the Quartermaster first. Since there's not a good alternative, so let's just use the Quartermaster first. Ooh, and we get Fistek. Fistek immediately, that is interesting. Um, we can use this Fallblood Priest right next to that. And just damage this Fallblood Priest uh, twice. Or just hit one of the Witcher students. Uh, it's already going to be at four damage. They can definitely take out the Priest right now, but... There we go. And there we get Horson's Freak Show. Okay, that's going to take care of the priests, but other than that, yeah, I don't really care too much, to be honest. But I really don't have a good hand to continue, do I? I have none of my good cards, they're all still in here. Look at that. Look at that, that's an entirely golden deck there. Um, so I am going to gonna pass at that. So opponent will try to uh, take advantage here. Yeah, okay, so that's only one coin extra in the next round, so fair enough. We lost that round, but at least the uh, Horses Freak Show is out of the way. That's a big damage dealer that's gone. And then we get, okay, so all of that's good. The Megascope is crap at this point. So we're gonna be able to, okay, so hey me, I need to be careful, because if I don't, if I pull Arnegat now, Geralt Quen is useless. So I need to get rid of one of the Bear Witchers. Okay, we got, whew. okay, that's really good. We get Vildkarl. Vildkarl is the man. Just, just the biggest, hugest beast on the board. Uh, we still have enough salt damaging, but look at those gold cards in our deck right now. That's really, really hurting. Okay, so the tax collector is going to get gutting slashed immediately. Want to get rid of those small engines as soon as possible. Now we get Horse Borsodi gaining them three coins, so that is fair enough. Uh, I think I'm going to start heavy with Olaf immediately. There's a few ways they can deal with Olaf. Probably, well, not, not in the least of which is poison. Um, so it might not actually be the best option to use it that soon, but I don't really have a good other card. Um, so Olaf goes down first. He's at 10 power, so he can't be seized by Philippa either. But I don't have Sigdrifa's right, sadly, so I can't resurrect him if he dies. And we get the Sewer Raiders next, so they don't really do anything. Uh, and our opponent doesn't use their Fee ability, so I am going to just Owami the combo on the board now. Uh, so Haim 
on the damaged Olaf and then Olaf is gonna go up to 19 points there we go and now we get Horson Jr. on the high damaging it by six and maybe destroying it offwards no okay I could use Hern Kaduch now but I think it's a bit too early for that uh, but it's basically too early for any of those but Gerd can actually go in the back that's gonna be three more damage on that back row there we go Giving us, yeah, that was, so 7 on the base, but then 3 damage, so that's 10 points for 7 proficiency, so that's still very, very good. Now we got Boris giving them the full coin pouch, finally, because that actually took a long time for them to reach that point. Um, Herrnkaduch is still too early, but on the other hand, I can actually use it now properly, because um, I can... So the Mentor is going to be 8 points, but I'm not yet at the Adrenaline point for that. So I'm going to just use the Quartermaster, I think. Uh, yeah, so let's use the Quartermaster over here. I can actually put that over here. That doesn't really matter all that much. And I can use the 2 damage on Gert. Because Gert can then uh, be healed by Hernkadu. Now we get Philippa Eilhart. Philippa Eilhart will probably seize Gert. Yeah, there we go. So that's also going in the back. That is not that much of a problem. Uh, I can still use the Bear Witcher to deal 3 damage. So yeah, let's do that. There we go. Sewer Radius are going down. That swap around was actually pretty hefty because that was uh, 15 points in one go. But of course, with coins spent, so they still had those points. So it's basically equal at the moment. Because our opponent still has three coins and the leader ability. I still have, uh, well, we're three points ahead. And we also still have our leader ability. So that's Ewald Borsoli going to go on the... No, not on the Bear Witcher. I thought that was going to go on the Bear Witcher. Uh, so next up is going to be Geralt Quen. Geralt Quen right on top of Arnagat, and Arnagat is going to be right next to Hernkaduch in case we want to heal him up. So there we go. Let's see how our opponent deals with that. Philippa is gone. So that's really good. So they can't steal Arnagat anymore. So I think we might be good here. If they don't have an answer to Arnagat anymore, like for example a lock, but I think this might actually be a devotion deck. So our opponent is deciding, so probably Vivaldi Bank? No, Professor. So Professor is going to put a, bount a bounty on what exactly? Oh, okay, there we go. So it did bypass the, the armor, so that was uh, good on them. Okay. I still have Viltcarl here, so I might as well use him now. Uh, so Viltgar on the board, let's damage him three times and he will transform into the magnificent champion of Svalblood. 12 points on the board, 13 points ahead. With, uh, there we go, there's Jackpot. Jackpot for nine coins going into Sigiruven. Sigiruven, of course, gaining uh, 10 points because of the, um, the extra boosts, well, the, the extra ability on... Uh, jackpot there if our opponent now uses caesar builds and as the final card i actually want to take care of sigi so there we go sigi goes down and that's that opponent still has nine coins we can't forget about that so this is going to be very very close and caesar there we go triggers the uh the profitability but it's not doing anything and they can only spend those coins anymore the one more point of vitality so that's 10 points 10 points 11 points 12 points okay um i'm gonna damage the champion of small blood uh that's gonna give us an extra point then the heimei herbalist is i think we're already enough yeah there we go we could technically heal up, uh, yeah, we can heal up the Champion of Fallblood as well, because there we go! Beaten Jackbolt with this, well, with our beefy Witchers! That was, that was a really cool game. So one more match to uh, demonstrate the power of our beefy Witchers, and it's, of course, 
against Nilfgaard imprisonment. We'll see how we'll fare against those uh, guys, because they can be very, very annoying to face off against. Um, we get a Witcher Adept to start. We don't want that. Of course, we want to have Portal in return. But that doesn't seem to be in the cards. Uh, we can get Armor up, giving us an immediate target for... Yeah, might as well keep it like that. Heim is not useful at the moment. I already get Portal. Okay. That is basically ideal. Okay. Really good. And I'm gonna start with the Nausicaa Sergeant. I think uh, I've seen this play by play a thousand times already. Because uh, they're just gonna start with the Nausicaa Sergeant and play a few Blight Makers. And, I mean, you know what's gonna happen. So let's just play Portal and get ourselves some beefy witchers on the board. Now we got the Duchess Informants on one of those Bear Witcher Adepts from us. Interesting, because of course those are now damaged beforehand. But we don't have our Gutting Slash, which is a shame. But let's put the uh, Svalbard Beast right next to the Adept. So we can get our little cycle going. Now opponent was really hesitating about what to do. It felt like they didn't really know how to handle those uh, Bearwitcher Adepts. And get another choosing option. So it might have been... Ah, no, of course. As I said... Lightmakers are going to be damaging either the... Ooh, yeah, the Priest, but that's also not that much of a problem. Um, now we can actually put the Megascope down, because I'm definitely expecting another one of those Blightmaker combos. Uh, there we go. We get our second Bear Witcher Adepts. And keep in mind that if our opponent now pulses, all we need to do is also pulse, because we definitely have the upper hand right now. Opponent is going to try and probably clear out their own deck. Uh, but we can do just about the same thing. Um, I can actually use armor up now. And just hit... I'm gonna actually just hit the Blightmaker. I don't really need to clear out their boards. And the more units, the better. Because Gert is gonna be able to damage that row immensely. We get a little bit of a connection loss there. Okay, we got connection back. But this still means that we're, we have the upper hand. Even though uh, our opponent is definitely uh, bringing the big combos... But yeah, our beefy witchers are doing just fine. Look at us, all those uh, fish flop around on the board at the moment. It's just lovely. And we get a pass from our opponent. A pass. So they want to go into... But I'm not going to do that, of course. I want to go into a push next and then into a, uh, a longer, uh, a short round. Uh, so let's hit those two boys. Doesn't really matter. And we can get a lot of more points where that came from, of course. We're going to get two more points from uh, from the Priest again, so that's uh, 44, 34. But we still have our leader ability, we have a lot of gold cards in our hands, and if our hand is really good next up, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be just perfect. For Alti Heat Wave, that's a good start, we can take out Masquerade Ball with that. The other cards are not that good. Armor Up needs to go, we get Herrn Katuch, that's a good, a good card. Do we get rid of the Fallblood Priest? He could be pretty beefy, but of course also a good target for any poisons or locks. Let's get the Bear Witcher Quartermaster out and we get a Bear School Witcher in return. Let's put the Covenant of Steel down immediately. And then just push regardless. Uh, I want to just drain our opponent's uh, card supply here. The more of those good cards that we're going to see, the better for us, I think. We still haven't seen Olaf or uh, Viltkarl, which is bugging me a little bit. Because they're still chilling over here again. Look at those beefy boys. Both of my bears and the Heim are gone. Okay, that's fair enough. So that's going to be poison. Uh, let's put the priest down to start benefiting from the Covenant of Steel. And they're going to need two poisons to actually take that out, uh, which is not a problem at all, because I can just resurrect the card in a minute. So there we go, we get a second poison. And I am not going to care one bit, because I'm just going to resurrect that man, well, that man and that woman, because it's a lovely love story on that card, isn't it? Look at that. That smile on her, on her face and his face as well. And we still have our... Uh, that actually didn't give us the... Def Wait, where's the defender status? I think that might be a bug. Is, is the defender status still on there? Ah, we got the Anniversary Invocation, of course, because... What else is Nilfgaard gonna do, right? Might as well put Gerd down now, because I don't really have another option for him. 
And there we go. And then the priest can still start ticking down further. Our opponent now does have a defender on the top of their deck. And we get a lock on the priest. That was also to be expected, but that's good. That's the first lock gone. I'd love to see another lock. We get that man's tongue instead. That man's tongue is probably going to boost that siren that we put on their side of the field. Uh, but I'm just going to put Heron Kadoog down as well. We can get some more extra points out of that in the next round. There we go. Eight points on that siren. And that's basically their turn. So let's do Heron Kadoog next. Um, and just use the Bear Witcher Quartermasters maybe. Now nah, we can go ahead with the... Uh, the bear witchers just damage damage all damage all the things there we go damage all the things then we get roderick of the time in between Ooh, and they're going for the defender immediately interesting um hmm question is do i now play arnagat or not Zarnagal is going to get locked, but then at least the lock is gone, but I think it's probably better to... Yeah, let's play Let's play the bear, which is going to be six more points. Um, so let's do this, and then this. Then hit, gird once, and then use the healing. So that's still eight points ahead that our opponent needs to circumvent. If they use the lock now, just as a straight-up damager, that's also going to be very interesting. But if they play Masquerade Ball now, it's not going to be enough. But I mean, the Defender is gone, which is really good. We get Coup de Grasse. Coup de Grasse is replaying Roderick, so this is just a zero sum up until now. So they still need to play a Golden card. So that's still eight points ahead, and then we get Masquerade Ball. But... The Van Morlehem Cup Bear actually triggered, so if they now use their leader ability, they don't. Okay, that's really good. That is really good. Uh, I could still Kurati it, but that would be just bullshit right now. So let's just end it there. It's sad that we didn't see the lock just yet. Because I think with Arnagat, if they can't lock Arnagat, that's just going to be super powerful. Okay. I think we still have the upper hand here. So we baited out Masquerade Ball and we even did it without losing card advantage. Well, without not being in card disadvantage, you know what I mean. Okay, so we get Blue Boy, which is already a good target for it. There we go, that's the 12 point card that I really needed to see. Um, I could put Blue Boy down just as a... Yeah, as a target. What else do we still have? Let's... We still have Olaf as well, which is just blatantly a 10-point card. I'm gonna try. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Alright, never mind. That was ideal. So I can just slam Olaf now. It's just gonna be 10 points. Um, I'm gonna try and... Ooh, wow. Just a naked blight maker with the assassin, but the assassin doesn't do anything. Okay, uh, blue boy Lugals with one hit because i won't be able to use that last hit effectively so it's going to be the most efficient use of that i'm hoping they're gonna lock it now i think Coralty might have been also a mistake to keep that in hand although never mind never mind we get joachim we get joachim on a 14 points usurper yeah okay i'm gonna i'm gonna take that i think that's probably the best card that i'm gonna be able to Coralty heat waste to buy <laughs> The lock is still there, so Arnagat is still not useful. I'm gonna try and bait it out with Olaf. Bordergave, they're gonna just use the Mentors, aren't they? Is there a good card still left, or is that gonna be... Oof. What is there still? Oh yeah, Arnagat himself. Okay, okay, let's just put Olaf down. I'm gonna hope that the lock goes on Olaf. If the lock goes on Olaf, I still have one card that's going to get destroyed by Arnagat. Otherwise, they're just going to lock Arnagat and it's going to be over with. Okay, opponent is deciding. We get Bratens, but Bratens will have to go onto an Emissary then, I suppose. Yeah, so that's seven points on top of that. And we don't get a lock. Or do we? Opponent is deciding. What's going to be... Okay, so the Megascope just on top of that. That was weird. Are they going to lock anything or not? Yeah, okay. Lock goes on Olaf. Okay, that's really good. So that means that we can now just use Geralt Quen on Arnagat. 
Arnagald is gonna go to four armor, but that's not really gonna matter anymore. So there we go. So that's basically negating their final card. This is looking good. So if they don't have a lock anymore, that's just gonna blatantly destroy their final card. If it's another mentor, yeah, that's just 10 points that have been negated. And it's good across, so that is gonna. Ooh, that is gonna hurt. I wouldn't have done that. Is that just gonna destroy that Fergus? Because the Fergus is gonna. It's gonna hit the shield, so that's 7 damage on that Fergus. So there we go, 7 more damage. Are we gonna get this? This is gonna be close. Uh, so we need 17 points. I'm gonna get 18. Yeah. I'm gonna get 18. So Viltkarl is gonna be. Uh, 12, so 1, 2, 3, and we get 6 more from the Abomination. So there we go, 45, 44. That was really, really good. Mwah. That was gorgeous. So, well, I mean, I do have to admit that that final, um, that final match came down to just having a perfect hand, but wow, that was just a, a, a really gorgeous match, if I can say so myself. But there we go, uh, the Beefy Witchers. Uh, that's that. This is the deck list again. It's it's a really fun deck to play around with, especially we didn't really get any um, um, Northern Realms decks, but uh, those automated pings against something like like uh, Olaf, even Ardagat, it's just gonna die constantly. And of course, our Bear Witcher Adepts don't care about damage. Blue Boy doesn't care about damage. So there's a lot of targets that can get accidentally hit where you don't really care about the damage being dealt. Kind of neutralizing the benefit that Siege has at the moment. But uh, other than that, it, it's just a really cool deck to play around with. So uh, starting out with the portal and then slowly building your way up to the final gold, car gold cards with Olaf, uh, Arnagat, Vildkarl, and then of course the amazing Heim combo uh, to finish things off. But that's it once again for this uh, deck guide, this episode of Gwentech. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any feedback on this deck guide, let me know in the comment section down below. Things that I can improve, cards that should definitely be in this deck that are still not in this deck and I've made huge mistakes during the example matches. Just, just let me know. I'm uh, really, really open to every kind of feedback that you can give me. Aside from that, the uh, link to the deck guide is also in the description down below. So on the Play Gwent website, you can import the deck as usual. Don't forget to upvote it over there if you uh, imported it because uh, any feedback and any support that you can give me is really really appreciated and with that i'd like to thank you all enormously for watching and i hope to see you in the next episode of quantage thank you very much goodbye and stay nutty